Now, your News 5 forecast first from the First Alert Storm Team, sponsored by Blues Angel Music in Pensacola. Good Sunday evening. It is now 9 o'clock on the Gulf Coast, and for most of us, it's been a mostly clear evening, nice and comfortable. Way off in the distance, there have been some flashes of lightning. We've been tracking some storms in our northern counties this evening. 82 degrees out at Gulf Quest Museum with a southwest wind. We've got a broken line of showers that have been developing in Greene County, Mississippi, stretching into Washington County. Alabama will keep that chance around for our northern counties this evening, but for the rest of us, Mostly clear skies, temperatures in the mid 70s. A look at the work week ahead as News 5 at 9 starts now. Local coverage you can count on. You're watching WKRG News 5 at 9. Hi everyone, I'm Peter Albrecht. And I'm Roseanne Haven. We're glad you're here with us. A historic day for the U.S. and the Gulf Coast as SpaceX Crew Dragon splashed down in the Gulf 170 miles off the Florida-Alabama line after a 19-hour return home. The private company working with NASA to get more astronauts into space. The two men returning to Earth after more than two months at the International Space Station. Dragon, SpaceX, comm check. After six minutes of anticipated silence, SpaceX Mission Control wanted to hear from the astronauts. Never had you loud and clear. We're about 3.9 G. When the Crew Dragon capsule came into view, everyone with SpaceX breathed easier. The capsule's four main chutes deployed. Astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley's 19-hour return trip was almost over. Splashdown. Welcome back to planet Earth, and thanks for flying SpaceX. The first splashdown ever in the Gulf of Mexico to dodge tropical storm Isaias in the Atlantic. We're doing pretty good so far. Two SpaceX fast boats reached the bobbing capsule. However, recreational boaters did too, a breach of safety and security. Uh, something like this just can endanger the whole thing. A recovery ship hoisted aboard the capsule. The astronauts came out the open hatch onto stretchers as expected, still readjusting to the Earth's gravity. The ground is go for undocking. That homecoming began last night, 266 miles above the Earth, where the capsule and crew separated from the space station. Hurley and Benkin then went to sleep. Rise and shine, Daddy. We love you. Their young son's awakening them this morning. Don't worry, you can sleep in tomorrow. And they hurried. Their fiery plummet to the Earth's atmosphere reached temperatures of 3,500 degrees. They kept falling when at 350 miles an hour, two sets of parachutes opened to slow the capsule down. This two-month mission was nearly flawless. SpaceX had aced its final test flight. America is back in the space launching business. Splashdown. Bob Bankin and Doug Hurley have become household names now, heroes. And just as crews worked to get the astronauts out of the capsule, the men shared some encouraging words for all involved with the historic event. Uh, we certainly can't thank you enough. Our families can't thank you enough. And, uh, just proud to be uh, a small part of this whole effort to get uh, a company people to and from the space station. Reiterate what Bob said and add uh, my thanks to uh, everybody over the last several years that's either worked in Hawthorne, McGregor, or down at uh, Kennedy Space Center. Anybody who's touched Endeavor, uh, you should take a moment to just cherish this day, especially given all the things that have happened this year. The astronauts were transported to the medical bay on the ship that collected the capsule and then traveled to NAS Pensacola, where Hurley was once a young aviation student. They then flew to Houston. They're expected to take part in SpaceX and NASA news conference on Tuesday. Here's a look at uh, SpaceX Dragon. By the numbers, this spacecraft is more than 26 feet tall, has a diameter of 13 feet, a capsule volume of 328 cubic feet, and a trunk volume of 1,300 cubic feet, that trunk portion or the bottom portion was jettisoned and burned during re-entry. Today's splashdown serves as an inspirational event that people of all ages will remember and appreciate for years to come, especially kids like Otto here. Otto, just one of many children and adults alike who are excited today to go to the beach just to be in the area of the splashdown. WKRG News 5 was in Orange Beach today as the 
Beachgoers looked on. Our Dana Winter spoke with many of the excited people, and Dana joins us live tonight from Orange Beach. And Dana, how did everyone react, even though they couldn't necessarily see it with the naked eye? How did they react to this big moment today? They were pretty excited, Peter. We stood out here on the water, and well, what you're seeing behind me is pretty much all we could see as well, but people say they heard it. Yes, yeah, space! We thought, me and Daddy and our and Mommy thought it was really cool. People of all ages gathering socially distantly together, watching history in the making. We were waiting and then it was like, oh wait, was that delayed thunder? I was like, oh wait, no, that wasn't thunder, that was the sonic boom. And it was like a back to back and then that was kind of what we heard and it was great. We were following it on our phone and then, uh, you know, we saw you guys come. We knew it was getting close and uh, it was really exciting. We're glad to, you know, we were able to hear the sonic booms. We asked one possible future astronaut about why she likes space. The, um, the planets and the stars and the um, eclipses and the moon and the sun. For some of the people we spoke to, watching the historic splashdown was a happy accident. They just told us and informed us that there was going to be a shuttle landing out here somewhere. While the idea of going into space can seem infinity to beyond a way, some are already making their packing list. My stuffed animal, two of my stuffed, three of my stuffed animals. You can find a full recap of today's SpaceX Dragon coverage on our website. That's WKRG.com. Reporting live in Orange Beach, I'm Dana Winter for WKRG News 5. Thank you, Dana. As the SpaceX capsules splashed down today, many boaters looked up from the Gulf waters trying to get a good vantage point to view the event, but some of them got a bit too close. As the recovery ship for SpaceX Crew Dragon began to load the Endeavor onto the ramp, you could see a swarm of boats inching toward the floating capsule. Those boaters were actually causing safety concerns after they began swarming the splashdown site. NASA officials shared their safety concerns regarding these boaters after the after the recovery during a news conference. Um, yeah, so that that was uh, not what we were anticipating. Um, of course, we we wanted to make sure that there was a, a clearing for them to land. The Coast Guard did an excellent job of of ensuring that. And then, of course, after they landed, um, the boats just came in and um, we need to do a better job next time for sure. The Coast Guard did clear a 10 mile radius around the actual splashdown site, but those boaters pushed forward as soon as the capsule hit the water. You notice that that NASA administrator was talking about the next time to find out what he meant by that. Let's bring in our chief meteorologist and space expert yes. Ed Bloodsworth. <laughs> yeah, it's been a busy day and it's been really cool to see, but this isn't it for SpaceX. They certainly have their hands full for the rest of this year and into the first quarter of 2021. Here are some of the times they're going to want to keep in mind. In late September, the Crew-1 mission will launch from Kennedy Space Center. This will be the first fully operational manned mission for SpaceX. Remember, today was just a demo. They will transport three Americans and one Japanese astronaut to the International Space Station for a six month mission. Today's Crew Dragon Endeavor capsule will be used next February for Crew 2. Four astronauts will be taken to the ISS. Now among those astronauts will be Megan MacArthur, who happens to be the wife of Bob Bankin, the Joint Operations Commander for today's Demo 2 mission. And SpaceX is booked solid through the end of the year. Right now the company has scheduled 13 launches of its Falcon 9 rocket and one additional launch of its Falcon Heavy rocket. So a lot going on in the world of SpaceX for the months, and you can bet the years to come. Well, the weather for the splashdown could not have been more pristine. You hope for future events it'll be just as nice. Yeah, the uh, winds were calm, the surf was calm, but uh, not the case in the Atlantic. Here's some drone video showing the uh, east coast of Florida today. It being hit with high winds and rain, this due to tropical storm Isaias. Let's check back in with uh, Ed Bloodsworth. And Ed, it was this rotten weather on the Atlantic that provided our opportunity to have this event here in the Gulf today. Yeah, it's a rough evening out there right now. Just a complete 180 from what we're seeing. This is the live view from Orange Beach. Check out that full moon that's reflecting 
off of the Gulf of Mexico tonight. Just an absolutely gorgeous view out there. Now, we do have a couple of showers and thunderstorms that we are watching. This evening, a bit of a broken line of rain has started to form from Clark County through Washington County, Alabama, and it stretches back into our Mississippi counties as well. So we'll zoom in a little bit closer. North of Leakesville, we got some rain, now a little bit of thunder and lightning, and this storm has been pretty persistent over Chatham, and actually it's getting a little bit stronger as it's drifting off to the north uh, towards Millery and the Dunbar community. So we'll continue to watch these. Nothing severe out there, uh, but just a little bit of thunder and lightning off in the horizon. 77 in Grove Hill, 82 for Bay Manette tonight, 77 in Fairhope, and 83 at Pensacola, 85 your temperature at Dauphin Island. Getting up, starting a brand new work week tomorrow, and when you step outside, it will feel exactly the way you would expect it in early August with middle 70s, bit of a humid start, but we enter into a very dry stretch ahead. We'll talk about those very low rain chances that lie ahead coming up in just a few minutes from now, guys. Right, thank you, Ed. A large brush fire at Gulf State Park near the first entrance had large clouds of rising smoke. You could see the smoke for miles. Gabby Easterwood is live tonight from Gulf Shores with the latest on that, Gabby. Well, Roseanne, the fire is contained now and all the units have left the scene, but that's coming after nearly four hours of them fighting those flames here at Gulf State Park. Now, the entire area that was encompassed with the fire was about five acres of the park and it was truly a hard fight for them. Now, there were different areas and hot spots that units on scene were having to deal with and not to mention the immense amount of smoke that it was letting off. Now, the Baldwin County at Tanker Task Force were also on scene and it's pretty significant when they pull together for an all call situation like this, but because it consists of various units from Fairhope Volunteer Fire, Daphne, Loxie, and a lot of other smaller communities who team up to fight these fires in Baldwin County. And the main units were on scene were obviously Gulf Shores and Orange Beach, though. We did speak with multiple people who were staying in the condo right next to the park, and they could see the flames from their balconies as well as when they were driving in. I was, I was coming from my house over on Fort Morgan, coming the back way. And I just seen all the smoke and I thought it was on the beach first and it was over here. And I came around to come to my friends that stand down here. And that was the end of the story. I called it in. They didn't make it here yet. It was burning pretty good by the time they got here. We were blessed that the wind was blowing the other way. Had it been blowing this way, we would have had to evacuate. You know, but these guys, there's over, I counted over a hundred. You know, with the police officers and the firemen, and, and they, they did their job well, and I salute them. Now, they said the start of the fire could have just been because it was that small brush fire, but we have not gotten confirmation as to what the start was. But a um, officer, excuse me, a fireman with the Gulf Shores Fire Department on scene did tell us that no one was injured. Reporting live in Gulf Shores, I'm Gabby Easterwood, WKRG News 5. <laughs> he loves rockets, beachgoers in Pensacola experience the splashdown today. Hear from more excited viewers. And voting during a pandemic. That's on politicians' minds. What we could possibly expect this November when we come back.